<laughs> just don't say anything, man. I don't even want to hear it. All right. Um. Then here's my question. All right. Uh, you can and you can talk as long as you like. Um. You have a unique perspective on Edgar Casey. Edgar Casey. Yeah, I knew this was gonna happen. Correct. No, no, no. I'm just a psych premonition, right? Dude, I ain't begging on you, man. You know. Um. Okay, so you see how you threw me off here. All right, so what was I talking about? Oh, yes, 2012. The, uh, the idea here is, is that it's having a unique perspective on Edgar Casey. All right, Casey did, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, he did a grand total of, I think, only 14 readings that actually dealt with the future, right? About 14 readings that did with the future, yes? Yes? And of those 14 readings, a lot of them were interrupted by his clients who were, you know, who said, I don't want to know anything about that. Just tell me if my partner's a crook and things like that, right? And Casey has been not only uh, amazingly pressing about what's going on, and his predictions have come true in a way, but not in the cataclysmic nature that a lot of people have expected. For example, he said that in 19, 1998 to 2000, that there would be a shifting of the poles, period, or the beginning of a new age. And it is interesting because there was a polar shift. Not many people know it in 98 to 2000 or so when the poles actually shifted. There's three magnetic north poles, and the pole actually shifted from one to another to another. If you're talking about Chandler's wobble, yeah. Yeah, Chandler's wobble, exactly. It did happen. Uh, he talked about 1998, the, uh, uh, the Library of Atlantis, the beginning that it would be found. And, of course, in 96, there's an earthquake in Cairo that cracked open the Sphinx Temple complex, and we think that the tomb of Osiris might be the foyer, if you will, to what might possibly right. be the, the Atlantean aspect. So considering that a lot of Casey's predictions – have been um, pulled down, so to speak. They have been softened by prayer and human action and, and what have you. And I'm not, I, you don't have to stick to that. I'm just, I'm just pointing out, because of your unique connection to this, the connection and the, what, what I am of interest, it, it, interest to me, we seem to have done so much work along the lines of the Mayan calendar, the harmonic convergence of 1987, meditations that have been done, 92, 94, earthquakes that have been lessened in California, um, I mean, working with the Prophecy Research Institute, when Gordon Michael Scallion was talking about the whole West Coast falling into the ocean and whatever else, and so many people did meditations in California, and then the call went out for people to start meditating, and, and I said, don't tell me what's the same, tell me what's different. And people began to realize that the future was not as dire as many of them thought. So 2012, again, I wasn't sure if there was a lot of prophecies, but if you could mix that with what your opinion is of what goes on in the next four years or so, because everything is beginning to condense. Everything is beginning to pull humanity back into that into the beginning of that quantum leap so take us there and take it away okay, great. well thank you Sean um, what I didn't want to have to dwell on is the reincarnation thing uh, if you're interested you can go to my website divinecosmos.com and read about that uh, because I don't really think this is about individual personalities as much as it's about yourself uh, a lot of people have come up to any of us on this panel I'm sure and would like to have uh, us be the Savior figure, for lack of a better term, and this, there's no mess, messianic return. It's a, it's a consciousness awakening that's happening in each person. And so if you want to get help from others uh, on your spiritual path, that's fine, but I would always encourage you to practice discernment and recognize that if a truth doesn't resonate with you, you can throw it away and not look back. Because as one of our panelists was saying, this is a future that we create. 2012 appears to be an energy field which is largely dependent upon our focus in terms of how we choose to go into it. Uh, and one of the reasons why we know that is because of the government time travel project I just spoke about in my workshop, which many of you are at, called Project Looking Glass. And it turns out that the person looking through the looking glass determines the future that you see by what they expect they're going to see in the future. So this is an actual government Atlantean reverse engineered time viewing technology that has now confirmed factually, and I've had multiple witness testimonies that don't even know each other independently tell me this, that we are dealing with a situation where how you look at it does determine the outcome. So if that works for you, then work with that, because honestly, I don't believe that we're dealing with the cataclysmic reality. Uh, the Edgar Casey readings you spoke of, Sean, uh, were largely dictated by an entity that at the end of the readings would call itself Halaliel. And Halaliel was later identified by the people in Casey's circle as being a trickster entity, and trickster means negative. So this entity is responsible for the prophecies of California sinking into the ocean. Do you think if I believed that, that I would live in Los Angeles? Honestly. So, <laughs> I, I'm not like you, though. I don't want to die until I'm ready. I, don't, I wouldn't get anything out of it, I don't think. 
But uh, no, seriously, <laughs> seriously, uh, I think that uh, in, in David's defense, a lot of us get that, by the way. Dude, you live in Hermosa Beach. You know, what are you talking about? You predict the future and you live in Hermosa Beach. That's where the wave is going to wipe everything out. And I keep telling him, well, California is going to be all that's left and it's going to be the rest of the United States that falls into the sea. So, you know, <laughs> that's right, man. Well, again, I, I want to remind everyone here that each soul, every one of you, is precious beyond imagination. And it's just such an incredible honor for all of us on this panel to be able to share this energy with you because as you tune into our frequency, there is a very real energetic conduit that is formed. And if we are clear enough, then our personality disappears and we become a lens for the creator that you're shining to us to shine back onto you, hopefully with some transformation and some nice filigrees on it. So I wanted to share with you a perspective on 2012, getting back to your earlier question, Sean. Uh, and this deals with the idea of what exactly is going to happen between now and 2012. And this gives me a great segue into a piece of information which is scientific in nature, which I've wanted to share at this conference, and this is the great time to do it. I was poking around in Russian physics. I was looking through the web for various uh, scientific studies done by Russians on torsion fields, which is the energy field of consciousness. And they've done some fantastic work. I quite by accident stumbled across the Russian Institute of Temporology, which means a study of the nature of time, and found a paper by a man named Dr. Sergei Smelyakov. <laughs> I know, I know. Go ahead and laugh, it's okay. <laughs> My coughs don't smell like anything, by the yeah, way, they're just say, roses. Say, yeah. But uh, Dr. Smelyakov, or we'll just call him Sergei, maybe that'll be easier. Or, or Smelly, as his friends call him. Or Sergey, we can call him Sergey. <laughs> I think Smelly's better than Sergey. I think actually. <laughs> Sorry, Danny. I don't want to tangent on you. I apologize. Um, okay. The point is this: Smelyakov looked at the mind calendar, found out that does everybody know about the golden mean, the phi one point six one eight? That's the harmonic cut, the sacred cut. You can cut a guitar string, and it'll be 1 to 1.618 is the ratio. Anyway, that's the basis of all life and all growth. If you take the Mayan calendar cycle, 5,200 years in length, and you start chopping that up by the phi ratio so that it implodes into a singularity in 2012, which means that if you have an imploding spiral, okay, you're cutting it by phi, you cut up 5,200, make that sacred cut, and then cut that unit and cut that unit, those cuts will fall on certain years. And what Smelikov discovered is that on those years, very, very substantial changes happen on the planet, including the fall of civilizations, the rise of new methods of measuring time, the rise of new civilizations, the rise of great spiritual teachers such as Jesus and Gautama Buddha, the major earth changes. In fact, the Russians did a 2,000-year retrogressive study of earthquakes and found that the biggest earthquakes happen on these resonance points. Well, think about what I said. It implodes into 2012. So what does that mean? Prior to actually hitting 2012, in the last year especially, there's going to be one after the other after the other. And every one of these wave fronts changes the planet, changes consciousness. One of the last ones we had was 1991, which was the fall of the Soviet Empire. One of the more recent ones that we had was right before, like two days before, the Bush administration invaded Iraq, which I believe was the political fall from the public will of power that they had. So we're dealing now with the next wave that's coming in 2009. As we head into 2010, 2011, they're going to start happening every couple months, and then they're going to start happening every couple weeks, and then they're going to start happening in every couple days. By the time we get to 2012, we're going to be hitting new ones every hour. And towards the end, it's, it's multiple times per second. Okay, now my readings have told me, for what it's worth, that some of us will be able to have ascended abilities I mean, full-on ascended abilities prior to the actual shift happening. So that would be very cool because what we're expecting after 2012 is a 100 times more harmonious utopian world where things like time travel, levitation, instant telepathy, instant healing, telekinesis are as common and as everyday as breathing. And I look forward to that time. Now, I've been told, I've been told that any one of us in this room, anyone, if you're willing to do your practice, which basically involves the acceptance and the forgiveness of the self, 
And if you get that down, then you start looking at everyone else. If somebody else upsets you, the only reason why they would is because they're hitting an issue that you have. So if somebody does something and it no longer is your issue, you won't be upset by them. If you can find that peace and that equanimity within yourself, then you will be the most compatible for this change that is coming. And as each of these new wave fronts hits, these are sufficient enough. They used to take hundreds and hundreds of years. They changed the whole nature of the world and civilization. They're going to start happening every week and then every day. So you can harness that potential in yourself, and I see a very, very positive future coming. So I thank you. Forget Bush. Yeah. <laughs> Already done it.